Hello again, everyone. Okay, so part two of the laser setup video, just showing you guys how I do most of my jobs. Hopefully it helps some of you with how you do things. Like I said, uh, this is just how I do it. It's not the only way to do it. It's not the, necessarily the best way to do it. If it works for you, great, use it. Um, just to answer a couple of questions from the previous video before we get started. Um, someone said, why don't you just use the material thickness setting? Uh, again, you, you could certainly do that. It's not uh, how I would normally do it. I prefer to do everything manually and set everything up as accurate as possible. I don't trust the camera. I don't trust the auto calibrations on the machine. I prefer to know all the settings that I've put in and I know it's accurate every time. And I always get super accurate alignment with the jobs that I'm doing. So we'll go through that. Uh, someone asked, do you need to recalibrate the laser for every job? Like if you're changing thicknesses or whatever? No, that, that's the whole point of getting that laser gap in the previous video. Once you've got that laser gap, you don't need anything else. You can just set that every time on any type of material and you're good to go. Uh, last question is someone was asking about the laser bed, like uh, how do you do the material thickness, uh, which I probably wasn't as clear about. So there's ridges on this bed and obviously if you're up here, you're a bit higher. If you went sideways, it drops down in between the ridges. So the, the material thickness is measured from the top of these ridges, like the, the top top, to the top of your material. That's your material thickness. Okay? So hopefully that makes sense. I, I know I use calipers. I use calipers for most things because I prefer more accurate measurements. But you can certainly use a ruler as well if you think you can eyeball it and get it pretty close. Uh, so hopefully that helps just uh, clear up a few things. Oh, sorry. There was one other question. Someone said, oh, if you take the laser off, do you need to redo the calibration? No, you do not which was another advantage of using the, the gap because the gap is always the same even if you take the laser head off and put it back on again. Anyway, so that's just covering off a few little housekeeping things. So let's get started on how to set up a work origin and to get all this together and do some of your jobs as accurate as possible. So this is the workpiece we're gonna use just for the, the demo. Uh, it's an Ikea chopping board. So basically, what we want to do is figure out the X and Y centering. So you're right in the middle of your job and you can start doing your print or your burn, whatever you want to call it. So how I do this, take my ruler, one hand, which is really difficult, and we measure each dimension. So as we can see, it's 150. So half of that is 75. So that's your midpoint at 75, just there. Now then we would check the other dimension, which is 230. So half of 230 is 115. So normally what I would do, oh, sorry, this flickering is really bad. I would just do a light pencil mark in each direction and I just sort of bring them together and normally I get very close eyeballing it because you have to do obviously one one at a time to try and get it centered. It, it's a little hard to describe, but it, it works, trust me. So then you end up with your little pencil dot right in the middle of your workpiece, and that is the dead center for doing your job. So basically, we can pop it back in the machine now. Like that. So I've just set up like a little, just a little jig just for this, for this demo. Got our pencil mark. So what we're going to do is go to control. And we are going to set up the work origin, which is basically our starting point where our reference is for the job we want to do. So we're going to jog the laser. I've already homed the machine. 
So we're going to bring it across. Bring it down. getting pretty close so this is the trick for how I do it I use the laser dot to align my job so we're going to just keep jogging changing between 10 millimeters 1 millimeter 0.1 millimeters depending on how close we want to get and we're going to bring it in and hone it in on that little dot Now this is a 1% laser. Just so we don't do any burn marks in our print. Getting close. Okay, so as you can see, if we zoom right in, we're very close. Right? Okay. So now we're happy with the X and Y axis. We've got all that centered. So now what we're going to do, bring in our drill bit. And we're going to lower it down. Almost there. There we go. So we're closing in. And now it goes under. It's just catching on the front edge. Alright. So, that's it. We now have our X, Y, and Z axes dialed in exactly where we want them. So now we come over to here, and we set our work origin, and set work origin. And that's it. Now, some cool things you can do, if you want to clear it out, and sometimes, depending on the job, I will just clean off the pencil mark if I think it's still going to be there after I do whatever I need to do. So you can just rub that out while clearing the laser away. So that will go home. Like that. Alright. So now, if we want to start a job, we can just go to files. I'll just load a random job. Got this cool spirit wolf thing. And to start your job, you would go to ready. Manual mode. Next. So now we're going to go to the work origin. The 
just to see if everything's all happy. And we are. Now we should be able to still get our drill bit. And it should still be nice and tight. And it is. And that's it. Your job's ready to go. Now, obviously, you got your camera, you can do all sorts of other things. Like I said, I think they're all trash. This is the way I do things that gives me the most accurate results every time. I know exactly where my job will start, where the reference point is, and it just keeps everything within check, and I waste very few things doing it this way. So, yeah, I hope this helps you. Uh, a few people asked about my fences and my work holding. I'm going to do another video about that and I'll just go into how I did things and how this removes a lot of the errors you get from your, your jobs being sort of sideways or, or whatever. Uh, anyway, that'll be in the next video. So I hope this helps. Any questions, put them in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.